This video is really for faculty who teach microeconomic theory. I would like to give you five reasons why you should teach your students to build their own economic models from scratch. And the first reason is the most important, which is that it empowers students to think on their own and to do their own creative thought using the tools of economics. So really, when we give our students these tools, it is for the purpose of them going out into the world and applying them to new problems that have never been seen before in businesses that didn't exist before or thinking about policies that were never in place before. We want them to go out in the world and use this knowledge to make the world a better place and to do their own thing. So if we teach the models in a very sort of, here's what someone else has done with these tools, isn't that cool? That just isn't as exciting and it doesn't give them the sense that they can actually use these tools creatively, but they can. Economics is incredibly creative if you allow people to build their own worldview using the structure that economics gives us. Students will be way more excited about the material if they actually see how they can use it to think about real world problems. And that means that you need to empower them to build the models from scratch. The second reason to teach students modeling from scratch is because it is the most efficient way of teaching the classic models that you have to teach them anyway. And economists love efficiency, so I'm saying right now, once students see that all of these different models they'll learn throughout the course are actually just variations on the same basic model, they're going to pick up on those new models more and more quickly throughout the semester. And the way I talk about this with my students is I, I talk about learning how to understand a car engine. Like if you approach every new engine of a different model of a car as if it's an entirely new machine that you don't know anything about, then you're going to be intimidated by any new model, even if you know a different car's model really well. So if you're teaching someone to work with cars, the best approach is to teach them the different parts of the car and the functions of those cars. And once they learn those and learn that, okay, all engines have the same basic parts, then when they open up the hood of a new car that they've never looked at before, even though it's going to look different and it'll be configured differently, they just have to learn to recognize what is the parts and what do the specific parts that you've already learned on another model look like in this new model. So that's just a more efficient way of learning about cars. It's also a more efficient way of learning about economic modeling. You want to know that models have these basic parts. They're rearranged differently in different models. But um, if you can build a model from scratch, that means you understand the parts well enough to work with them yourself, to move them around yourself. And once you can do that, you, you're going to get really good and really fast at recognizing those parts in the context of a new model. The third reason to teach students to model from scratch is that it helps get them past false understandings of the field of economics. So if you've taught economics for any amount of time, you've probably heard this complaint from students that the assumptions are so unrealistic and that these models are, are just uh, false pie in the sky models that have nothing to do with the real world. And of course, that understanding is a misunderstanding of what we're actually doing in economics. And of course, there are reasonable responses to that that don't involve building your own model from scratch. For example, you could say to students, all models are false, some models are useful. That's a common saying in the field of uh, computer science, artificial intelligence. That's true of basically any model in any field. They're all false, they're all oversimplified, but they're still useful. However, if you say that to students, they're, they're going to be like, well, how are they useful? We're not actually using them to look at novel problems. And if you have students building models from scratch, you can give them really interesting novel problems and say to them, build your own worldview. Try to map out the way you think about how this works and how these incentives would be at play. And once they've done that a few times on problems that they consider important, 
they will understand um, how the field is working, what models are used for, how models connect with the data, and how models help you be more solid and more grounded in your thinking. That's something that kind of has to be learned by doing, and by doing that means building your own models from scratch, rather than learning how other people built their own models from scratch. The fourth reason to teach students to build models is because it's not as hard as it seems. Students really do pick this up pretty quickly if you teach them the basic parts of the model, if you have them recognize basic parts of the model, and just get them building their models from scratch from an early day in the course. Because the number of vocabulary that they actually need to know to build their own models is actually pretty small. Endogenous variables, exogenous variables, choice variables, costs and benefits, constraints, increasing marginal costs as a shape of a graph, diminishing marginal benefit as a shape of a graph, and then the basic rules of modeling. I have a video on the four rules of modeling that I go with, and you can basically check most models for logical flaws using those rules. That is enough to get students started, and having them recognize which variables in a model are exogenous, which are endogenous, having them identify logical flaws in a model. If you can give them a few worksheets or exercises to sort of get over some of those humps, most students can learn this within a few weeks. And actually, I will post some videos below and also a link to my GitHub where I'm posting some of my own uh, worksheets that I give students to get them up to speed on how to build a model. Oops, I forgot to write the fourth point, but it's not hard to, to learn to build models. And the fifth reason to teach students to build models is it's actually really fun. You can model so many different scenarios, including fun ones. I usually start with a student trying to decide how much time to spend studying, but pretty soon after that I move on to some interesting and creative models that I have them build, such as how many tricks do you build into an ice skating routine for the Olympics, how many jobs should you apply to for your summer internship, how many minutes should you spend weightlifting every week? How many alcoholic drinks should you have on a Saturday night? How many people should you date before you settle down and marry? There's so many fun questions that actually really work well for model building and help you to sort of frame the insights that can come out of model building, comparative statics, and just the economic way of thinking. So doing this kind of thing with students, uh, it makes for a fun classroom environment. Sometimes you learn things from the students because they think about things slightly differently and then you're like, hmm, could you build that into the model? And you have to get creative on the, the whiteboard and students get to see you being creative with them, inspired by them. It's just a lot of fun if you actually start start out the course from the very beginning, letting them build their own models and helping them to make those models logically sound. So I highly recommend it. This is the way to go. I really do think this is a better way of teaching microeconomic theory.